Alright guys, welcome back. We're going to be solving another question in today's video, question 56 from the second chapter of Miriam textbook. And we have this mechanism that is used to lower the disabled person into a ripple top for therapeutic treatment and the unloaded configuration the weight of the boom and hanging chair induces a compressive force of 575 newton in hydraulic cylinder a b so basically the cylinder is in compression in here so the cylinder is in compression uh, meaning the force that is applying from the cylinder to point b has to be in the opposite direction of this one based on the newton's law and same magnitude so we have this force of 575 newton applying at this point b so in the parenthesis the question is explaining the direction from a to b which is coming from what i just talked about so it says that a compressive means that the force which cylinder a b exerts on point b is directed from a toward b or this direction that we can see so we know that theta i'm just going to clean up we know theta is 30 degrees and we need to determine the moment of this cylinder force acting on pin b so this is the direction for the force uh, from a to b so a part of the question about point o and b part point c so basically we have to find two moments one about point o in here and the other one about point c so from the definition of the moment we have moment is equal to the cross product of r and f and basically our r or position vector would be any line that connects the point that we are trying to find a moment about let's say we are trying to uh, solve the a part or moment about both so each of these can be our r so we are good to go to pick whatever is the easiest and it seems in here if we go with the first one that connects o to the a we should be able to solve this pretty easy as long as we can't dissolve this force that we have into x and y component so if we call these two as x and y component as long as we have this angle here let's call it alpha we are good to go to find the moment because at the end we have all the distances for the moment and we can use the 2d shortcut that we have for finding the moment by the way i'm going to put the link in the description below if you guys need to refresh your mind for finding the moment using the 2d shortcut that we have so basically we need the force in x and y component we're going to call our x and y like this here and the vertical distance for each of them which in this question we have the 200 well we get to the moment in a minute let's just see how we can figure out that angle alpha because that's the hardest part of this question and after that it will be much easier and and the question is how we're going to find that angle here so i'm just going to clean up the figure this figure might get a little bit messy i try my best to uh, show it using different colors so feel free to drop your questions in the comment section if anything is not clear so if we look at this right triangle that i'm highlighting in light blue so if we figure out this side and this side we can do a simple tangent of alpha opposite over the adjacent and we're good to go it will be a piece of cake after this but like uh before that we have to figure out how to find uh these sides so if we look at this little part Part here try to uh, show it in a bigger scale then we can see better so if we want to find that side uh, so if you want to find this side we basically have from here to here which is pretty easy we have 800 plus 175 plus 100 plus this little distance here which is what we have in here and the question is how we can figure that distance out so if we look at this triangle in here we know uh, the left triangle the hypotenuse is 400 and all the dimensions are in millimeter by the way and we have 150 as the hypotenuse of the other right triangle that we have we know this angle is 30 degrees here and if that's 30 this one in here would be 30 degrees too and the reason is that we covered the trick in the channel uh, which is very useful when we have two angles that each side is perpendicular to the other one so this one is perpendicular to this and same for this one these two are the same and this is the case in here we have these two and these two so this one is perpendicular to this one and this one to this one so these two angles are the same so if that's the case that angle is 30 degrees too so it should be easy to figure out that distance there as long as we have this distance 
which we can figure it out is 400 sine of 30 degrees minus distance in here which is 150 cosine of 30 degrees if we subtract these two we can find that a uh, little light blue that we have in here if we want to get back to our tangent of alpha we have uh, as we discussed in here uh, 800 plus 175 plus 100 plus what we wrote in red I'm gonna use the red color so 400 sine of 30 degrees uh, minus minus 150 cosine of 30 degrees so that's pretty much everything for the opposite side of the alpha and next time we have to find the adjacent of the alpha so we can find the distance if we look at this dotted line we can find this distance from here to here which will be 175 plus what we have in here which is this side so we have 175 plus 400 we have 400 cosine of 30 degrees which is what we have in here plus what we have from here to here which this time will be 150 sine of 30 degrees but we are interested in this distance here so we just have to subtract the 200 in here so minus 200 is going to give us that distance that we are looking for this was the hardest part of this question and after this is pretty easy but like finding we have to be mindful of what we have in this little area which is consists of these two triangles that we have again if you guys have any questions if anything's unclear feel free to drop your questions in the comment section so if we calculate the numerator and denominator in here in the uh, numerator we get 1145.1 and we get 396.4 in the denominator and if we calculate alpha will be tangent inverse of 1145.1 over 396.4 and that's going to give us 70.9 degrees which would be our angle alpha so if you want to find the moment about O counterclockwise positive as always we have the moment of so the x component would be the force which was 575 cosine of alpha which is 70.9 and the other one would be 575 sine of 70.9 degrees so uh, let's find a moment about point O so the cosine would be a clockwise moment so we have a negative sign 575 cosine of 70.9 degrees times the distance that we have so this is the line of action and this is our vertical distance which is 200 and since all the dimensions are in millimeter we're going to divide by thousand to get it meter that's for that and if we look at the moment of the y component we'll see that this one is going to make a counterclockwise moment so will be positive plus 575 sine of 70.9 degrees and the distance here this time this is the line of actions also 200 divided by a thousand and if we calculate this we get 71.1 uh, newton meter no negative sign it shows the moment is counterclockwise so that's for point o a moment about point O, let's go to the moment about point C again, counterclockwise positive. Uh, so we just have to be mindful of the direction of the moment for these two about point C. Let's show it with different color. I'm going to go with light blue. So we are looking for the moment about point C. So let's go with the cosine first. As we can see, the cosine about point C is going to make a counterclockwise moment. So we have a positive moment plus 575 cosine of 70.9 degrees and the distance that we have this time would be from c to here which is 800 so times 800 again divided by thousand to get it in meter and we have also the moment of the y component and this one is also counterclockwise so plus 575 sine of 70.9 degrees and this one the distance would be from here to here which is again 200 same as the other one 200 divided by a thousand and if we calculate this we'll get 259.2 newton meter 
No negative sign. Again, the moment is counterclockwise. And the final answer for the B part of the question. So this was the A part. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, there are a lot of details in this question that we need to be a little bit careful because that's going to mess up our final answer. But hope you guys find this one helpful. Let me know if anything is not clear or if you have any other better solution to solve this one. Uh, feel free to drop it in the comment that everybody can benefit from the other answers that might be easier. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and comment. It's going to help me to reach out to more students. And you guys take care. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.